Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Real Time, where we talk about the movies we like and the ones we don't. I'm Tyler. And I'm Molly. Today, we're going to be talking about two animated movies of TV shows that are really the best examples of, well, animated movies based off of, of uh, TV shows. Mm-hmm. Animated TV shows, that is. Yes. Um, you know, every once in a while, some cartoon will. Uh, release a movie um, as you know pretty big deal Um, and uh, these are uh, two of what we think are the best yeah whether it be the Simpsons uh, Hey Arnold which I do want to cover the uh, Hey Arnold Arnold the movie and the Jungle movie Aqua Teen Hunger Force or Bob's Burgers Uh, animated shows have a history of being successful enough to get a uh, a big budget movie on the big screen and like I said we're gonna be covering what are probably our favorites yep we're gonna be t- talking about South Park bigger longer and uncut and the Spongebob Squarepants movie oh yeah you know I'm a big fan of the Spongebob Squarepants movie now we're covering these two movies because uh, bigger longer and uncut is celebrating its 25th anniversary this year in fact we hope to release this on the 25th anniversary of its actual release uh june 30th of 1999 uh spongebob has its 20th anniversary this year uh the exact day is going to be in november though so um but i figured let's just get it out of the way now hey i mean we may as well so south park bigger longer and uncut is was made during the, the first few seasons of south park it was directed by trey parker Written by Trey Parker and Matt Stone. And, uh, well, these two basically had a lot of, of uh, a lot of credits on, on this one movie. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> Acting, producing, writing, st- directing. Did I say starring? Uh, starring? I don't know. Don't know if you said that or not. Um, the point is, there's a lot. Yeah. And these two have been basically the, the, uh, the, the creative minds behind South Park since... It's Inception. Well, duh. Yeah. I mean, they did create it. So, let's go through the cast list. This is going to be relatively short. All right, let's go. Uh, Trey Parker plays Stan, Eric, Satan, Mr. Garrison, uh, Philip, Randy, uh, the mole, Tom, the news reporter, a midget in a bikini, the Canadian ambassador, the bombardiers, Mr. Mackey, the army general, Ned... Jerblansky and others, and Matt Stone plays Kyle, Kenny, Saddam, Terrence, um, Jimbo, Gerald, and Bill Gates, among others. <laughs> yeah, they each have uh, quite a lot of characters to, um, uh, you know, provide the voice for. Yeah, like like Hank is area Dan Castellaneta and Harry Shearer on The Simpsons. These two make up the the bulk of the voices on their show. Mhm. Yep. That is true. The late Mary Kay Bergman plays uh, Leanne Cartman, Sheila Burflosky, Sharon Marsh, Wendy Testaberger, the Clitoris. It makes sense in context, mm-hmm. among others. Mary Kay Bergman was the uh, voice of most of the of the women characters on this show and she Unfortunately, was she she had her own demons to deal with, and it unfortunately ended with her committing suicide. Um, in 1999, after this movie came out, hmm, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, I guess. Did somebody replace the voices? Yeah, yeah, they they were all replaced uh, after afterwards. Mm-hmm. Okay. Isaac Hayes, the late Isaac Hayes, I should say, uh, is also in this movie as his beloved character, Chef. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very good character. He's the one who is, who tells Stan that he's needs to find the clitoris in order to get women to like him. Mm-hmm. Not a great, not great advice for for a little kid, but I guess it worked out in the end. Yeah, definitely not the best advice to give a kid. 
also making cameos. We have George Clooney as the doctor who uh, accidentally puts Kenny's heart in a, in a uh, microwave and replaces it with a baked potato. Mm-hmm. Pretty funny, yep. Brent Spiner plays Conan O'Brien. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mini Driver plays Brooke Shields. Usually on South Park, they don't actually get the uh, the real celebrity to cameo as themselves, but occasionally they do, such as when Elton John appeared on the show. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. The first time, that is. Ah, okay. And Mike Judge has, has a cameo as Kenny's uh, unmuffled voice. Mike Judge, of course, I don't have to say who he is, but I'm going to anyways, is the creator of such shows like Beavis and Butthead and King of the Hill. Mm-hmm. I, I've not seen Beavis and Butthead, but I am a big King of the Hill fan. Uh, yeah, just stick with King of the Hill. Beavis and Butthead is, well, it's got its audience, but it's not exactly my thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see it being a either you like it or you don't type of show, I guess. Yeah, so Bigger, Longer, and Uncut is, like, you, like we said, the first... I guess we could say the first South Park movie, given we in more recent years we've had a, a specials that could be counted as movies, but, you know, depending on who you ask. Um, uh, yeah. The first, but it's the only feature-length theatrical release movie. There you go. Then I would consider it, yeah, the first movie for sure. Now, what happens in this movie? Uh, so Terrence and Philip, this, this uh, Canadian uh, duo, releases a movie that the kids all want to go see. But it's rated R, so they can't go in. So they sneak into a uh, theater in order to see it. This, this Something similar happened with this movie in real life. Um, kids would buy tickets to go see Wild West World, or Wild Wild West, and then they would sneak into this. Now, this pissed off Trey Parker and Matt Stone, not because they were you know worried about losing revenue on this, but because they didn't want to support that other movie because they thought it was absolute crap. Oh, I have no idea what that movie is i've never uh well it's this it was based on this old tv show uh will smith is in it and at one point they fight a giant mechanical spider which spun off from this superman script that kevin smith was writing that would have starred uh nicholas cage in it that is uh uh, yeah there's a lot there (laughs) yeah there is (laughs) um but yeah that's kind of funny that real life um mirrored the movie well yeah kids are always going to try to watch something that their parents think is is taboo or something that they're told not to watch it's just simple kid you know um psychology you tell them not to do it they're gonna want to do it yeah i mean you might have that dad in the friend group who's like oh sure i'll buy your tickets you know um but usually yeah your parents probably aren't going to let you go watch an r-rated movie if you're too young Anyways, so they go see this movie, which one thing leads to another. They start learning all sorts of bad words. We're not going to say all of them here because this is a family show. We're going to say some of them. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) No, I'm not. Anyways, uh, and this pisses off their parents. I just said this is a family show. but (laughs) Look at you already. That's not not the first time I said that this, this episode. I really don't know. Anyways. Um, so, yeah, their parents are mad because they, they learned a, bad, a whole bunch of bad words. And then it also leads to Kenny getting killed. What a shocker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was basically the, the, the thing that happened in every episode back then. Uh, it doesn't happen quite as much anymore. But, yeah, that was just the norm. Kenny would die every episode. Stan would yell, oh, my God, they killed Kenny. And then... St- Kyle would say, you bastards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, why do you think they stopped doing that? Uh, maybe because they, uh, they they wanted to actually use his character more. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, 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 could, I, could, I could look it up why, but um, stall for a second for me, please. Okay. Yeah, because I was just wondering, because in a lot of the old South Park you've shown me, yeah, he dies in every episode, but some of the newer stuff that you've shown me... Um, yeah, I, I don't think he does die. So, yeah, I, I was just wondering. I was just curious. Um, okay. Uh, at the end of season five in the episode, Kenny dies. Uh, they killed him off in a more permanent way. He had uh, 
terminal muscular dystrophy, and uh, Parkinson said they wouldn't that he wouldn't return in future episodes. Uh, originally, they were actually going to kill uh, Kyle off permanently. Oh, why? Uh, I guess they got tired of killing Kenny off so much, but they they ended up doing doing it with Kenny and having it be a like an actual thing. The ne- the whole uh, next season, he was out of the friend group. He was dead. He was basically replaced with uh, Butters. I am a fan of Butters. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess part of it is also because once you, uh, when it's not like an every episode thing, it becomes more funny when they actually do kill him off. Yeah. Like like in the episode where they, when they go to the water park and he drowns in pee. Mm, that's an unfortunate way to go. That's not even the worst way. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Anyways, back to the movie. So Kenny, of course, goes to hell because in the South Park universe, only Mormons go to heaven. Interesting, but all right. Yeah, it's kind of silly, but. It's funny also. <laughs> yeah. But also, in, in South Park, hell isn't really that bad a place. You know, I mean, yeah, it's it's hell, but, you know, Satan's kind of chill in this universe. He's pretty flamboyant and in a, in a, in a very dramatic guy, but he's chill. Yeah, and Kenny just kind of seems to be wandering around. It's not like he's being tortured or anything. Yeah, they gave him a hard time when he first got there, but after that, he just... He's just hanging out. Yeah. Maybe maybe, maybe Satan doesn't really torture anyone here very much because, you know, in, again, in this universe, everyone but the Mormons goes to hell. So if you're in hell, it's just, okay, welcome to hell. This, this is where you're at now. Yeah, pretty much. And as a result of all of this, the, the U.S. and Canada are going to go to war. And according to this prophecy, where after the after the U.S. government executes Terrence and Philip, Satan and Saddam Hussein, his new gay lover, are going to rise up and rule the earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a pretty interesting prophecy. Pretty there. wild plot. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is obviously not either of our first viewing, but what do you think of this movie? Um. I don't even know where to start. It is quite the interesting story, you know. It's uh but I mean it's a South Park movie, so I mean, you know, you're expecting something that is crazy and ridiculous. Um watching it this time, yeah. Um it, it's pretty funny and the songs are catchy. Yeah. Um, in fact, I've, I've said this before, but uh, uh, legendary br- uh, Broadway uh, writer Stephen Sondheim said that uh, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut was one of his favorite musicals in recent history. It is impressive. But that's pretty cool. <laughs> you know, that, that kind of praise from someone of his stature is pretty good. No, Trey Parker and Matt Stone are an incredibly talented duo, and I'm I'm here for the, for their work, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. Even if it's uh, pretty much insane, it's especially still, if it's yeah. pretty much insane. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this was uh, I'm about to read Stephen Sondheim's letter to Parker and Stone, mm-hmm. or just Parker because it's just addressed to him. Okay. I would have written you sooner, but I'd, I've had trouble finding your address. I hope this reaches you because another, because it's another fan letter. I saw Team America and voted for it as the best movie of the year. A fat lot of gut it did you. I gather from friends to whom I've burbled on about that it was treated rottenly by the critics and that you are much discouraged. I can't blame you, but then again, this is the time of discouragement. In any event, congratulations to you and your partner. Would you ever be interested in writing a stage musical with an old traditionalist, namely me? Yours truly, Stephen Sondheim. Hmm. Pretty cool. Now they would eventually be, uh, do. They would eventually would write a uh, traditional stage musical, The Book of Mormon. Though this wasn't a, that wasn't actually due to uh, Sondheim. They were actually planning this back in two thousand three. I did not know they wrote The Book of Mormon. Yeah, they did. I didn't know that, which I've never seen that. Uh, I know nothing about it, so that's kind of funny. <laughs> I did not know that. Which, 
Sanhai from from the sounds of th- th- things he l- loved Team America as well. So these this guy was was all for the this these guys work like me. So yeah, if yeah. if Sondheim says that your musical talent is good, then it must be really good. This is the guy who who did the music for Sweeney Todd among a plethora of projects. Oh yeah, he's a pretty cool guy. All right, so, um, yeah, this movie is insane. It's 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 incredibly raunchy, which is by design. I feel like this movie was also a bit of an uh, an answer to uh, the parents that were uh, who who thought that South Park was the work of the devil back in the nineties. Yeah, I can see that definitely being a response, um, a pretty funny response to that. Yeah. Um, like take for example the the opening song in this movie. It's something that could possibly fit into a Disney setting. There's no bad words, nothing really inappropriate, r- not really, and it's just uh, a catchy song to open your movie with. And then the next song has like twenty thousand f bombs in it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's funny. F bombs and farts. Yep. <laughs> You know, and the and one of the Canadian uh, officials late on in the movie says something about the Terrence and Phil movie that applies to this movie too, among other R-rated pr- movies that parents mistakenly take their kids to. The movie's R-rated, so you really shouldn't take your kids to see it. Yeah. You know, it's your responsibility as parents to, well, be, to make sure that what your kids are watching is actually... You know, appropriate for them. It's your job to do that. It's not the job of the studios to make content just for your kids. You got to be the one to take care of what your kids watch. Yeah, don't let your kids sneak into the movie theaters to watch an R-rated movie. Yeah, don't let them be like me. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, let's be honest. Kids are gonna watch this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like just like how kids wa- were watching South Park behind their parents' backs in the '90s too. Just like how they're still doing it now with other shows. I don't watch much TV, so I don't know what what the new taboo thing is. I don't know. Uh, But yeah, kids are going to watch this um, no matter what. Heck, I didn't even have to sneak in to to watch this movie. My aunt and uncle showed me this when I was like eight or nine. Oh, boy. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, that might be a little too young, but hey. I guess you turned out okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I watched this with my Uncle James, my Aunt Tisha, my Aunt Michelle, which, does any of that surprise you? No. <laughs> um, nice. Um, I didn't watch this until I was like... Dating me? Yeah, tw- 25 maybe. Well, you also didn't watch South Park in- until you met me. Yeah, that's true, so... Ah, I'm sorry you went that long. Yeah. <laughs> It's all right. I like it more than what I thought I would have. I will give you that. All right. Would you like to know some trivia for this movie? I would love to know some trivia. So they poke fun at a lot of of uh, celebrities in this. And one they pretty much venerated as a deity. Um, who? Well, there's the, there's the song, What Would Brian Boitano oh. Do? Oh, yeah. That is a catchy song. I like that one. Yeah, I love it. Pretty much all of the songs in this movie are bangers. The only one I not necessarily dislike, but the one I don't love is Saddam Hussein's song about how he can change. Like, it's fine, but I'd rather listen to every other song more. Yeah, I mean, they can't all be bangers. Uh, so when Brian Boitano uh, heard that they were that they wrote a song about him in this movie... He got a little concerned because it's South Park. They rip anyone uh, a new uh, a new one if they're if they feature them on their show. Yeah, I'd be concerned too. But uh, when he actually sat down and listened to the song or watched the movie, either, either one, uh, he thought it was actually pretty nice that they thought he was really cool. Yeah, yeah, he got probably like one of the best, uh, you know spoofs on south park he got like you know 
They they all like him. Yeah, they they treated him really well. The only one person I could think who came out looking better than Brian Boitano was Caesar Milan with his episode, which Caesar Milan really liked that episode too. But it's also pretty easy to uh, like your portrayal on South Park if they're, you know, if they're praising you. They do it so rarely, but it's pretty easy. Yeah, and like that, the lead singer from The Cure saved the world in that one episode. Yeah, he turned into Mothra, yeah. and he fought about against Mecha Streisand. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. So, yeah, not all celebrities get off bad on <laughs> South Park. Although some of the ones who uh, who get crapped on, they, they have a good sense of humor about their portrayals, too. Like with Steven Spielberg and the, the, the China Problem episode. I don't know what was going on there. Uh, it basically showed that him and George Lucas has raping Indiana Jones. Oh, yeah. I, I do remember that. Wait, no. That wasn't the one that, that he thought was funny. It was when um, they were making fun of him for uh, replacing the, the guns in E.T. with, with uh, radios. Mm, yeah. Because he did eventually go back and change that. But as, as far as I remember, he had a, he thought that was funny. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyways, um... Okay, reporters asked Kim Campbell, the Consul General to the United States, and former Prime Minister of Canada about the song Blame Canada, and she thought it was funny and satire against Americans and didn't find it offensive at all. Yeah, it is. It's just it's just satire. It's just a joke. Uh, Canadian singer Anne Murray is name-dropped in the Oscar-nominated song Blame Canada. I love that sentence. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, as one of the terrible things about that country with the line, and I quote, and that bitch, Anne Murray, too. Hmm. She thought that was funny, and and she wa- even wanted to sing the song at the Oscars, you know, for uh, the, the performance of the Oscar-nominated songs, but she had another commitment and couldn't do it, so Robin Williams did it instead. Mm-hmm. Pretty funny. Uh, Conan O'Brien was also spoofed on this, and... Uh, he, he, he also thought it was funny. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, you gotta be able to laugh at yourself. He, he also said that his, his interns also loved it, too. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Uh, so, uh, also, obviously, this movie was, uh, well, it, it, it wasn't released in Iraq for obvious reasons, with Saddam Hussein still being in power at the time. He wouldn't be... Uh, removed until four years later in 2003 and then executed near the end of 2006. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, after uh, dro- after troops invaded and captured Saddam, they played this movie, they made him watch this movie as a form of torture. That's pretty funny. You want to know something crazier though? What? Saddam liked it. <laughs> Is that true? Did they really make him watch it? I want to believe that. I'm going to believe it. That sounds ridiculous, but. And Saddam sent uh, an autographed picture to Parker and Stone. Oh, that's that's really funny. Oh God, I I love this. Mm-hmm. That's wild. Okay, so the original cut of this movie was rated NC seventeen instead of R. Mm-hmm. And just on language alone, if you have four hundred or more uh, swear words in your movie, you're going to get an NC seventeen rating. Like it doesn't matter anything else. That's what you're going to get. Guess how many bad words Bigger, Longer, and Uncut has? What was the number again? The number is 400 to get NC-17. Oh, so they had 399? They had 399. Yeah. I can, yeah. You got to do it. Uh, you, you, you just, you just got to love it because would one more use of the F word really make it that much more inappropriate for someone under 17? No. There's already a lot, so one more could not hurt. No, but that's how stupid the, the, the rating system is. Yeah, if, if you hear one more word, one more F word is just going to shut down your whole brain system. Uh, the title, uh, the original title of this movie was called South Park All Hell Breaks Loose, but the studio execs deny that because... Hell is a, apparently a bad word, I guess. Okay, yeah. The hell are they talking about? Um, I know we like just watched this movie, but what's the title? The fish, official title. Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. Okay, okay. That's what I was thinking. You know, something that's uh, a bit more uh, a bit more of an entendre. Yep, mm-hmm. 
you, you got you got to marvel at the absolute ridiculousness of movie ratings and studio executives. Yeah, it can be weird. Okay. Say something. Um, something. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. Um, let's see. It is quite a ridiculous movie. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know you want me to to uh, stall, but I can't think of okay. anything. Okay. Uh, executives also try to get Parker and Stone to make a PG-13 movie instead of an R-rated movie. No. Yeah. They did not like that idea, I guess. Alright, so there's also some things that could have uh, that could have been went different with this movie. Alright, like what? Uh, the movie was originally going to open with Saddam Hussein getting executed in the electric chair. Mm-hmm. He actually got in in the movie proper. He 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 was killed by a pack of wild boars. We don't get to see it, but it's said on the news reel. Uh, in real life, Saddam Hussein was uh, was executed by hanging, but this was seven years later, so they couldn't have known that. Yeah. Uh, plus, killed by wild boars. That's pretty cool. I guess. It sounds like it. Uh, there was going to be a music video made for the song "Eyes of a Child." Uh, this this wasn't in the movie proper, but it was on the soundtrack. Okay, I have not heard that one. I guess. Uh, Ike was originally going to follow the boys to the battlefield, to presumably helping them rescue Terrence and Philip, but they decided to not do that. Mm, yeah. Okay. Some things they they actually had to change to not make it NC seventeen. Aside from the one fewer bad word. Mm -hmm. uh, the scene with Winona Ryder was originally going to actually have her shooting ping pong balls <laughs> out of her vagina as the old party trick goes. Yeah. But I guess they decided to be funnier to have it be a bait and switch to have her just <laughs> hitting them with, with a paddle. Yeah, you think they are being shot out of uh, her vagina, but she's actually just hitting it with a paddle. It's yeah. I mean, you gotta watch it to, to know what we're kind of saying. But that one was pretty funny. Uh, this has nothing to do with the rating, but the town of Southwark was going to be turned into a concentration camp, with Kyle being issued a yellow star for doing well at school. What the why? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that sounds a little, a little too much maybe. Um, Conan O'Brien was originally going to kill himself by shooting himself in the head instead of jumping out out of uh, his building and. You know, crashing on the ground, mm -hmm. but uh, Columbine had happened a few months earlier, uh, so they didn't want to, you know. Yeah, just have them jump out of a window instead. Uh, uh, Sheila's Sheila's villain song was the hardest to write. Over four different songs were written and just abandoned. One of them was going to be a dark Disney style thing that would have included a scene where she would scale up like Maleficent. Mm-hmm. They they abandoned that because uh, they didn't they realized they didn't want to completely de demonize concerned parents, just make them seem a little silly. Yeah. Okay. The the one she sang yeah is definitely more lighthearted and just goofy. Yeah, they were actually very surprised that th this song was nominated for an Oscar too. Yep, I, I that is surprising. Um. Yeah, so a, a lot of things are also in this movie that aren't in the series as well. Uh, I think this was the first time we saw Saddam with Satan. Probably. We see in later episodes that that they are exes at, at one point. Satan is dating this new guy. I forgot his name, but Saddam gets jealous and tries to murder him. Oh boy! But since they're in hell, where else are they gonna go? Detroit. I don't know. <laughs> Isn't that the same place? Ha ha ha! I made a Detroit joke. Okay. 
<laughs> ah. Well, anything else you need to add? Um. Okay. Also, geez, there's a lot of this stuff. Anyways, it, I, I, I mean, I, I just mentioned stuff about like what could have been that I found interesting. Yeah. Uh, Wendy's a uh, new new boyfriend, Gregory. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is just the blonde guy from Top Secret. Yeah, that's a good one too. We need to review that one. Yeah, that one's on the schedule. We'll probably do it at some point this year. Yeah. Um, so what about him? Nothing. Well, he, he's not in the show, and I'm not too upset about that because he kind of sucks. Yeah, not my favorite character. Yeah, that's... I mean, him and uh, a few pacing issues are really the only problem I have with this movie. Because on the one hand, it is very funny. I do think... I do really enjoy it. But there's some points in this movie where it drags a bit. Like, nothing too serious, but it's still something that is there. Yeah, I see what you mean. Um, but yeah, I don't think that's a problem, really. Well, that's also to be expected when you take something that's originally a 22-minute cartoon and stretch it to be an hour longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, that will affect the pacing. Yeah, but for the most part... This movie just both flies by and feels like the right length of the, the right amount of time. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, I get you. So that is big South Park, Bigger, Longer, Done, Cut. Uh, any final thoughts before we move on to the SpongeBob SquarePants movie? It's sometimes I just can't even describe it, you know. <laughs> it's just that type of movie. Ah, it's great, isn't it? Uh, sure. <laughs> well, I love it. Yeah, it is entertaining. Yep, it's very entertaining. Right, with that, we are going to be moving on to the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that. The SpongeBob SquarePants movie was released in 2004, and at one point it was supposedly supposed to be the uh, finale of the series. I could see it being the finale. I mean, it ends on a good note. SpongeBob becomes manager at the very end. Uh, so you know, I can kind of see it as a as a finale, but it definitely was not. <laughs> But as the nature of these things go, a successful franchise will never be left alone for long. So, SpongeBob continues today as one of Nickelodeon's longest running, if not its absolute most longest running show. Yeah. Um, what season started up? Like, what number of seasons? Bro, I'm not even sure. The show's been on since 1999. It's been 25 years. Yeah. Well, I meant, like, after the movie, what number was... What season was it? It was either four or five. Okay. I was just wondering. So, considered by some to be the best Nickelodeon movie, and, and by some people I also mean me. <laughs> it is uh, very good. I don't know what Nickelodeon movies there are. Well, you got fun things like Good Burger, Rango, uh, Rango, Nacho Libre. Oh, that that's a hard one. For me, it's probably between this or Nacho Libre. But we're going to be talking about this one. Maybe Nacho Libre some other time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Another time, perhaps. This movie, of course, stars uh, the, the goat himself, Tom Kenny, as SpongeBob SquarePants. Yep. I mean, who else is going to voice Spongebob? Couldn't tell you. Yeah. No one else can. We actually got one of our copies of this movie signed by Tom Kenny at a con we went to last year. Yep. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. Pretty cool guy. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty fun. He even, he even spoke to you in his Ice King voice when you asked him to. Yeah. I was like, can can you talk in Ice King's voice, please? And he did. And I was like, oh, yeah. This is great. <laughs> and I, I was like the one guy 
that that whole weekend probably who uh said anything about the uh, a different show he was on mission hill it was his thing back in the 90s and he seemed very impressed that i uh that i knew about that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very impressive yeah you stuck out in his mind maybe i hope so (laughs) yeah probably clancy brown is of course mr krabs um just just clancy brown doing his absolute best Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah he plays a good mr krabs Basically, everyone from the show is here. We got Roger, Roger Bumpass as Squidward, Bill Fogerbache as Patrick Starr, Mr. Lawrence as Plankton, Carolyn Lawrence as Sandy, Jill Talley as Karen, Mary Jo Catlett as Mr. P- Mrs. Puff, not Mr. Puff. Um, let's go down the line. Yeah. Um... Say something real quick. Okay. Um, well, fun fact about this movie and my own life. Um, I had a cat named Rosie, and she had multiple toes, like more toes on her feet than what a normal cat did. And she was kind of crazy. She was very uh, high energy. But I watched the SpongeBob movie one day, and she was calm through the entire movie and watched it with me. So it was her favorite movie. <laughs> I was, I, was, I was about to ask, what does this have to do with Spongebob? It does. You just gotta bear with me. <laughs> also, Lori Allen as Pearl. Oh, yep. Mm-hmm. They got small parts, but yeah, they are in there. And new to uh, this movie, we have Jeffrey Tambor, Mr. Always Money in the Banana Stand himself as King Neptune. Yep. Mm-hmm. A very different King Neptune from the one that we saw previously on the, sh- on the show. Yeah, I wonder why they changed him. Uh, well, this is a this is a thing that uh, they decided to do. They wanted to keep the uh, the events of the movie and the TV show separate. <laughs> Why? Uh, yeah. Oh well, I mean it's fine. That's n- never really bothered me. Scarlett Johansson plays his daughter Mindy, the future ruler of the sea. Yep. Mm-hmm. Alec Baldwin plays Dennis, a bounty hunter who gets sent after SpongeBob and Patrick to keep them from learning the truth of. Plankton actually stealing uh, King Neptune's crown. Yep. There's a easy joke to make here, but I'm not going to make it. <laughs> All right. Well, keep going then. And David Hasselhoff plays himself in a role that introduced him to a whole new generation. Yeah, that's pretty wild. When was this movie made? 2004. Oh, yeah, because it's 20 years old. Um,. Yeah, so that was definitely my first time seeing David Hasselhoff. Honestly, probably the only thing I've ever watched him in to to this day. Yeah, only thing that really counts, because he did make a cameo in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Oh, I don't even remember. Uh, Ego turned into him for like a second to to show him that he this was the, the this is a form that he chose and that he could easily turn into someone like David Hasselhoff if he wanted since uh Quill was really into uh Night Rider as a kid. Mm, okay. I don't remember, but yes, I'm sure you're right. <laughs> Anyways. Um now there isn't really a whole lot of uh deep introspective thoughts to be making about this movie or any really anything like that. It's just a fun time. It really is. Like I said, it was Rosie's favorite movie. <laughs> Um, I love this movie, and I think there's a lot of people out there who do. Um, I was born in 97. You were 95. Everyone else kind of born around that time grew up with SpongeBob. Yeah, I'd say so. So, so yeah, this movie is very popular with our crowd, I would say. Yes, it is. Um, a lot of people would say that this marked the, uh, the end of an era when SpongeBob stopped being good. Um... I don't entirely disagree. It was definitely a, a, decl- a decline in quality after this. But there's still some, some uh, gems to be found. The first few seasons after the movie weren't so bad. Yeah, I'm going to have to try to remember episodes and seasons. But uh, I do think pre-Spongebob movie were my favorite episodes. Yeah, I think so too. It's just, it's such a funny show. Um, I mean, I don't even know what to say. It's just so easy to connect with, and 
it's just I think it's humor for everybody yeah I agree um, I have a I have a manager at my work Jim he's a he's he's an older fellow and he's not an old guy but he's older than me I'd say he's late 30s early 40s or something and uh, whenever I um, whenever I uh, hear just just Spongebob music play randomly I know oh Jim has a text or something <laughs> yeah Spongebob man it it's it changed a whole generation yeah it, and not and it's not just our generation too maybe people uh people who are a bit older than us thought this was pretty fun too yeah i'm sure parents watching it with their kids or yeah older kids whenever it first came out uh yeah i'm sure they all watched it well yeah it's it's uh, definitely a better thing to be watching with your kids over something like peppa pig or dora for instance I never really watched Dora because I was a little bit too old, but I remember my brother did. Oscar watched Dora? Yeah. And I was too old for Peppa Pig, too, whenever it came out, so. (laughs) So, I don't know. Anyways. um, But, yeah, this is definitely something we're going to be showing our daughter, Clementine. Yeah. um, Because I use a lot of spongebob references within my daily life so i'm gonna need someone to understand them yeah show and movie we're gonna show them both to her yeah and all the memes that have came from spongebob heck this movie alone yeah there's quite a lot and they're all hilarious (laughs) of course uh yeah just so funny i love spongebob now uh would you like some uh to learn some trivia about this movie I would love to so um let's see okay it's it's assumed by many that the movie was meant for, to be the chronological finale for the series with every episode after season 4 actually having before the movie uh but current showrunner says that this was never the case um, however, um, let's see. Or maybe it was meant. Maybe it was meant at one point to be the the, the series finale, mm-hmm. but the but when they when they finally made the movie, it wasn't like that anymore. Mm, yeah, I mean, this is a extremely popular franchise, so I could see them milking it for as long as they can. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's Nickelodeon. They're gonna, they're gonna milk this cow for as long as they can. Oh yeah, definitely. And an unfortunate uh, result of this is, um, whenever a new show comes out and it doesn't do SpongeBob numbers immediately, Nick just disregards it. Yeah, that is unfortunate for shows that don't get as much love but are just as good. Which. SpongeBob itself wasn't a massive hit its first season. It took some time to get off the ground, so why not just do the same thing with these other shows? SpongeBob had had the had the good graces of someone who saw the potential in it and said, "Hey, let's let this cook." Yeah, um, it seems unfair to cut a show off so early before it really gets to take off. Yeah. Oh, uh, well. Yeah, I mean, that happens. Okay, so... in this At the mo- at the end of this movie, Spongebob sings a parody of uh, the Swiss Sisters song, I Wanna Rock. Now, uh, when Dee Snyder first heard that uh, the producers wanted to license it, he was on board because, you know, money. Well, yeah. Uh, but then he heard that they wanted to change the lyrics to uh, the Goofy Goober Rock version, and he didn't... He didn't care for that because he thought it would detract from the art of the song until he heard the producers were willing to, sh- to, uh, to uh, pun intended, shell out 300000 for it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So after that, he, he, he was willing to do it. Yeah, you know, you pay the right price and yeah. <laughs> uh, Snyder himself put it, I'm a whore, but I'm an expensive whore. Okay. Yeah. 
he also had two kids in college at the time, so he uh, he he was he was wel- welcoming of the money. Yeah. Hey, I'd be too. I I would definitely take that. Uh, the pirate ship at the beginning of the movie was uh, the HMS Bounty built for the movie of the same name from 1962, okay. Mutiny on the Bounty. I did not see that movie. Uh, another uh, funny thing. So, Thomas F. Wilson, best known for his role as Biff in the Back to the Future movies, has a role in this movie. And you know what I, what I also didn't realize is that he has quite a few roles in the, on the TV show proper, too. Yeah, you told me you told me this whenever I think it was about the around the bar scene, and I was like, "Oh, this was this was new for news to me." Uh, in this movie, he plays uh, the guy who's trying to f- find out who blew the bubble in 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 the, in the in the bar. Yeah. And on the show, he plays Flats the flounder who wants to kick SpongeBob's butt, Reg the salty spittoon bouncer. Uh, you know the. Uh, Welcome to the Salty Spittoon. How tough are yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, once you told me that, I was like, okay, I I do recognize his voice. As well as the Tattletale Strangler. Yeah. I, I love the Tattletale Strangler episode. So, turns out, Thomas F. Wilson is a much more versatile voice actor than we realized. Yeah. I didn't even know it was him. All these years. Uh, in one draft of the movie on their trip to to get the crown back, Spongebob and Patrick were going to encounter the cast of Rocco's Modern Life while scuba diving. Mm, yeah, I don't know about that. That's a bit silly. Yeah, I think that would take you out of the story. Um, let's see. There was, um, there's different scenes that were either storyboarded or just not finished. Um, for one... There was a there was a scene of SpongeBob seeing cakes uh, and airplane ba- banners congr- congratulating Sp- Squidward on his manager promotion. Can you say that one more time? There was cut footage of SpongeBob seeing cakes and airplane banners congratulating Squidward on his manager promotion. Oh, okay. Ow, I'm being kicked. Um, the pirate captain in the, in the opening was supposed to be patchy with potty instead of a live pirate. Okay, see, I was always wondering why they didn't use Patchy. Uh, there was another deleted scene where SpongeBob and Patrick were going to meet Sandy on land, you know, implying that she moved, she got out while the getting was good. Oh, yeah. Uh, this was changed to, uh, by the censors because they didn't like how much Patrick puked because he thought, uh, he thought how gross Sandy looked. Oh, like as a real squirrel? Yeah. That would be kind of funny. Others say it was removed because it didn't add anything to the movie and just slowed down the pacing. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Another scene would have shown three human bystanders that were just SpongeBob, Patrick, and Squidward in human form. Mm. Which would get get uh, some sort of actual thing in the uh, the 20th anniversary episode when there was a basically a live action human version of all the spongebob characters yeah i remember that and that's about it for deleted scenes um so when it comes to this movie versus south park bigger longer and uncut i'm going to assume we have different opinions probably because if your opinion isn't that you like spongebob more then our opinions are different yeah yeah I figured. I'm more of a SpongeBob girl. What can I say? I'm more of a South Park guy. Yeah. Well. Sorry. Agree to disagree, I guess. Well, that's okay. Clementine can watch them both. Um, she can watch SpongeBob mm-hmm. much earlier than South Park. Oh, oh come on! I watched South Park as a kid. I turned out fine, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, I, I could tell you watched South Park as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell oh you didn't watch it until you were an adult. Yeah. Because I'm a good child. You're a dork. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, I just like SpongeBob, okay? Anyways. Both of these movies are ultimately stuff you should check out. 
whether you're you're more into South Park or SpongeBob, you're gonna have a great time with both of them. Yep, either one. It's a fun time. Yeah. So next time, hopefully, we'll be able to take care of the Captain America movies by the fourth. Huh. Work has been kind of a kind of an issue for us, for me, that is. But uh, we'll we'll do our best. Yeah, I doubt it. I'm gonna tell you right now. I doubt we'll get it out by the fourth. Yeah, we'll try, dude. Yeah. Okay. So, see you next time. See you next time.